Okay, here's a three main points I want to tackle. Um, what's headless CMS? Why go headless? And what are some of the headless CMS in .NET Core space? Um, there are actually plenty of uh, powerful CMS um, for developing applications out there. But let me just focus on some popular ones, including the ones I'm familiar with. I think that .NET Core is already a versatile and great framework, but having a CMS will allow for more faster um, developing times. Hi everyone, my name is Ruby Jane. It's just a brief intro of myself. I'm a freelance web developer based here in Norway. And here's my lightning talk on the CMS in .NET Core. What old is new again? So what's all this new again? So yes, headless CMS uh, has been around for some time, but while headless and decoupled architecture are nothing new, the demand for this kind of solution has been increasing in the last few years as companies look to deliver uh, to content locations outside of the standard web browser. So it is even projected that uh, there will be over 40 million IoT devices by 2022. So in short, multi-channel publishing is increasing in complexity and we need to keep up with it to thrive. So what's headless CMS? So the term headless comes from the concept of chopping the head, which is the front end from, or like the website of the body, which is the back end. And for example, the content repository. Headless means that the application is built with an external API. So let's break it down a bit. Um, this image is what I would say sort of captures the idea of what's headless CMS versus the traditional CMS. The woman is the front end and the man is the back end and the waiter is the API. As you can see, the old married couple, which I would imagine to be a happily contented couple, sort of like the traditional CMS, now prefers to talk to, talk to each other via the waiter. Um, Okay, here's maybe a better picture. Again, unlike a traditional architecture, in a Hello CMS, the front end and the back end are completely separate systems. Uh, API given by a headless CMS enables you to distribute content to any channel, gadget, and platform of your choice. So due to this approach, a headless CMS um, does not care about how and where your content gets displayed um, at the same time, making it easier to deliver content to different channels. So in the end, being headless has only one focus, storing and delivering your structured content. Controlling the connections. So using a headless CMS, you could push content to just about anything, um, from spa to mobile app or even other CMS. The big promise of the headless CMS is to enable you to reuse the same content delivered through different channels. So it lets users create and store content in a repository, but it doesn't take care of the delivery of the content to web pages or apps. It's just raw content, um, which is available through APIs, usually JSON or XML or just about anything. creating the API or application programming interfaces. So over the last decade, APIs have exploded. Essentially, everything is driven through APIs. They are the communi communication standard that, that power everything on the web. So what's an API? Um, think of it as sort of phone line between two computers or computer programs. Um, it's a way for these two computers to talk to each other and share information, regardless of what handset they're using. So one good example of a use case for headless CMS is when you deliver content to something that is not just a website, or when you don't know the web device and all you have is an API integration with that device. So why go headless? Um, I think there are many advantages of going headless, but foremost is that you can easily integrate with the new technology and innovations. Also, um, when a front end system is not tightly coupled to the back end, there is no need to update the entire system every time. It can be just part of the system. 
this way you can easily upgrade and customize your application without compromising the performance. So some use cases for headless CMS. Um, the website is created with static site generators, um, not native mobile apps, um, and it can also enrich product information on your e-commerce site. So headless CMS in .NET Core. So obviously I won't be able to mention every headless CMS or the couple CMS in .NET Core because one, I don't have the time here. And second, and most importantly, I don't know all of them. So let me just briefly discuss some of them. Some I have experience working with and with the rest I've heard great things about. So let's start off with Orchard Core. Um, Orchard Core can be deployed anywhere, regardless of the platform with container support. Uh, it manages content using GraphQL or REST API. And it is multi-tenant means it offers reusable website templates, making you manage uh, multiple sites with a single installation. And it's also Docker support. Cofoundry, so Cofoundry focuses on code-first development. So these are the requirements for Cofoundry. And the simplest way to get started is to create a web project using the .NET new command line tool. Uh, it has Docker support. It has in implementations for Azure uh, services via a plugin. Piranha Core. So this is how you get started with Piranha. Um, Piranha is a totally package-based um, using NuGet and can be easily started with that new, uh, new template like this. Squidex, so like other headless CMS mentioned here, Squidex is also an open source. Um, it offers rich API with all data filter and Swagger definitions. It has Docker support and it offers good documentations and samples on these sites and if you're interested to learn more about it. Umbraco Hardcore. So last but not the least is Umbraco Hardcore. Umbraco is actually well-known um, open source CMS and Hardcore is a uh, full headless uh, offering or option. It has a built-in managed API. So all your content um, is automatically exposed via REST API. Um, it offers webhooks and GraphQL API. Um, it ships content delivery um, capabilities using Cloudflare. Um, so obviously there's still a lot of headless and decoupled architecture out there. And these are just the ones I'm a little bit familiar with myself. So it's up to you if you want to research more about it. Uh, and decide for yourself what best fits your business requirements. And here's an N million crooner or a million dollar question. So should we all just start chopping off the head? <laughs> Because it has to be said that headless CMS is not the magical thingy that can be fit um, every business requirements. But I think that um, chopping off the presentation layer and making your content available to one or more than platform should be a consideration whenever possible or applicable. So that's all for now. I appreciate you guys for listening and thanks to NBC Oslo for this opportunity. And as I say in Norway, Hadebra, bye. Stay safe and well.